reported the price as of close today, but the plus minus spread has always been since our last episode. Always. I'm not crazy. <laughs> not for that. Close to. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to GameStack Podcast. Happy Friday. Pull up a chair, get yourself some snacks. This is episode 111. It's Leviosa, not Leviosar. And I'm your co-host, Vendertron. Joining us this evening is Rick McVick. Hello, Rick. Hello. And also Shaleen. Hello, Shaleen. Hello. How's everyone doing today? Oh, I'm furious. I'm so mad. <laughs> Um, so mad. It's been that well, kind of a week, eh? Hey? Yeah. No, I'm not going to tell us why. Oh, why okay. not? Afraid the audience is going to back us up? No, Rick, no. Because I'm right. I know Don't I'm right. Don't tell them. <laughs> Don't tell them. They just... Are we not telling them or are we telling them what they don't, don't know, know what they don't we know. had a we had a little background fight what background they don't fight. know won't hurt them everything's so. okay we still love each other yes by the, um, by the way Shalene is correct episode 48 she has the note in there no. yes I knew it damn it I knew it we should have known <laughs> we should have we should have known better we should have known better I don't think I've ever known that <laughs> Well, we'll just leave it there. <laughs> Welcome to the show uh, right here on We Just Love Games Network. Uh, we hope that you have all had a wonderful week. If you are coming in live, we love that you are here. Thank you for your continued support. If you are tuning in after the fact and you're listening to the recording, thank you for your support there as well. We love you guys. It's such a great community. Let's get this show started. Before we do begin, we do have a sponsorship to mention. We are sponsored by Oak and Crow Coffee. If you head on over to oakandcrow.com, you can pick up a bag of We Just Love Coffee Blend and $2 from every We Just Love Coffee Blend bag goes to the Children's Miracle Network. There is one other thing that I quickly want to mention. I misspoke last week, Shaleen, when we did the show. Oh. And, you know... I'm sure that nobody me nobody noticed, but it bothered me all week. You know that article we were talking about how Elden Ring had increased its pay for its employees? Yes. Yeah. And we were going on about how like game developers in the video game industry work tireless hours. They sleep at their desks. You know, it's, it's mm -hmm. nice to see a company supporting their employees. Well, I had made an offhand off the cuff comment about sexual harassment in the workplace that that's probably something that game developers also have experienced because we've seen articles and talked about that on the show. But I, I sort of chuckled afterwards. Um, and I just want everybody listening to know that um, that was a, that was a, a thing where I had misspoke. Um, sexual harassment is not a laughing matter. Uh, and it's certainly not something that should be joked about. And I'm sure nobody noticed, um, but it was something that bothered me and I just sort of wanted to address it. So yeah. So, um, if you are listening live, thank you for joining us. Host us. Uh, tell your friends about the show and send them on over every Friday, 6.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time, 8.30 Eastern Standard Time, right here on twitch.tv slash we just love games. Uh, and you can join us every Friday. Yeah. So how's your guys' week been? Okay. Pretty good, actually. Pretty good. Okay. Any, oh, yeah? Anything? You want to tell us anything good? That's well, it? Sure, just good? Fine. Yeah, it was great. Uh, I got a no job. Yay! Yes. Uh, so I put in my two weeks today at this job that has been killing me. 
and now I'm on to new things. Oh. Uh, yeah. I will be working in audio again, finally, and nice. I'll be prepping consoles, uh, audio consoles, before they go out on major tours with some cool artists. So if there's any artists that you don't like, I can sabotage said consoles, right? <laughs> so like I'll put auto tune on like so, if you Creed know, like, ever has like a revival Chris, tour, I'll just put Yeah, Chris Brown, auto-tune. you can just like put some yeah. yes. put some worms in the in the mixer or something. We'll just like route everything weird so they don't know what they're doing. No. Um so yeah, I'm I'm really excited to Route it that so that it just starts weeks. playing Rihanna. <laughs> <laughs> when he starts singing S S M M M M So yeah, I'm very I'm very excited because it it tweaks on all things of like technical and uh hands on and customer support and a lot of that. Well things. this is huge for you. It's very big. Yeah. Like so this they... is huge. This is what you've sort of been working towards since we started the show, kind of. Yeah, kinda. Um the the benefit I mean it's it's it, everything's really good uh it's you know it's for a really big audio company and um it's nice that uh it, everything it, it was, i was such an idiot oh my gosh i uh showed up and i was like yeah i'm here to meet such and such and they're like well let me see if he's available and then like they're like are you rick and i was like yeah and they're like <laughs> isn't this supposed to be a phone interview so <laughs> like uh <laughs> oh god maybe so what oh, happened? I thought you were mortified. Uh, and they're like, well, okay, he'll be up in a second. <laughs> and I had missed in the email. Well, the email said it, it can be a phone call. So I just took that as like, ah, can be, but I'll just show up, you know. <laughs> uh, and they're and like so- jotting down on their clipboard shows initiative i guess i guess so <laughs> but it was a surprise technical interview so they're like here's a console and this this the stuff you've got to do so i did it I've fantastic never, yeah so well was, congratulations really that's Thanks. great news yeah i'm really mm. happy for you it's it's tough when you have a job that you find kind of soul sucking and i've had plenty <laughs> of those and i hope this one's less so you. Yeah. yeah, I think this one's I mean, one of the interview questions was Star Wars or Star Trek. So I mean like Oh my mm-hmm. god, that is such a hard question. And your answer was Battlestar Galactica. Wars. No, I said Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I would have said? I would have said Janeway is the only way. <laughs> <laughs> they 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 also mentioned they're like, yeah, someone actually once said, Oh, I'm not into sci-fi, and then all of them are like, Yeah, they're not very good. <laughs> they're not getting hired. Yeah, I would have done the taco girl meme. Why not both? <laughs> <laughs> no, I I I uh I can't get into Star Trek. Yeah. The, TNG is the only you one just, for me. You but... need to start with Janeway. That's how you get into Star Trek. Is That's... that Voyager? Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Kate Mulgrew posted this um, this tweet yesterday of her and um, Conan O'Brien doing a jig for St. Patrick's Day like 20 years ago when she was on the show as a guest. It's really funny. Yeah, because she has Irish roots, I think. So. Oh, she, she's fantastic. Kate oh, Mulgrew. she's so lovely. I love her. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. What about you, Shaleen? How was your week? Uh, it's over. Is uh, <laughs> It was. And it is no more. And yet I still stand. <laughs> I'm still standing. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> wow. <sighs> well, well good. Um, we do have some new people in the Discord. Shalene, do you want to introduce us to our new Discordians? I would love to. In our Discord are two names that I actually found familiar. Banana Sushi and Harper Larp. I remember both of these names from back in the day. Yes. So. yes. Welcome the home. Welcome home. Mm. Banana yes. Sushi we're glad. Like that, like that pool table with one leg shorter than the other three. You found your way back to the corner pocket of the internet. Yes. I was wondering where it's that a analogy weird analogy. Was going. I yeah. don't even know what I just said. Yeah. Um, just if you guys happen. recall, Harper Larp is like. An OG listener. Yes. Oh yeah. I remember Harper Larp from way back. From in like the, day. the Fallout mm-hmm. days. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so welcome, welcome, one and all. Um, how can people join the Discord? You can join the Discord by clicking on the link on our Twitch page right below the screen right now. If you are not watching us live, that's fine. That link is there all the time. So if you visit twitch.tv/slash 
We Just Love Games and click that link. It'll direct you to our Discord. Alternately, if, if you have some kind of vendetta against Twitch and refuse to ever visit their website, you can send us a DM on, on social media platform of your choice and we'll get you a link to the Discord. Nice. Slide into those DMs. Well, we do have some news. We're going to talk about the DDDD game stock. We also are going to talk about what you guys are playing and then what we're playing. But this just in. Take it away, Shaleen. Oh, thank you. So, um, of course, as always, shout out to Joseph Tao. We love you. Thank you for your help. Um, Hogwarts Legacy is a Harry Potter MMO that has been sort of in the pipe for a while now. Ah, ah, okay. Sorry. I was accidentally started playing an ad on my screen and none of you heard that. You just heard me screaming about it, which I apologize. Um, but Avalanche Software has shown some, some Hogwarts legacy, um, a pretty good chunk of it during the Sony state of play. Um, this happened yesterday, I believe. So Hogwarts Legacy will um, put you as a fifth year student at Hogwarts. And um, in the state of play that they showed, it included a wizard duel with a classmate, brewing potions in potions class, flying on a broomstick, exploring campus. And some plot details were unveiled showing the player investigating a goblin rebellion led by a goblin named Ranrock and uh, noting that there was a bit of an uneasy alliance between goblins and dark wizards. Hmm. Hogwarts Legacy is set in the late 1800s, so far, far in the past uh, of the Harry Potter stories that we know. Um, And... This decision was, and I quote, to ensure your legend is never overshadowed by any other hero, which I think is pretty cool. They can sort of do what they want with Mm -hmm. the universe without having to worry about fan service quite as much. They can really immerse you in the world Mm -hmm. and make it about you and not about characters, you know, from from Mm -hmm. this incredibly popular franchise. Um, There are some new mechanics and features that were shown, including a talent system where you can upgrade specific skills like stealth um, or your ability to efficiently use abilities that you learn when you are in the room of requirement. Um, So this actually, what I've, what I've watched, I'm actually reminded a little bit of Bully, which is one of my favorite games of all time, uh, which is really fun. Um, but of course you can't really talk about this game without also talking about the controversy that surrounds it. Uh, of course, JK Rowling, who is the creator of the Harry Potter universe has, uh, made a a large number of anti-trans comments on Twitter and in the media. And, um, of course, this is this is not great. We don't uh, we don't like transphobia, and Warner Brothers has stated that she is not directly involved with the game. Um, but I I still I see a lot of commentary of people that are that are unwilling to support or even really acknowledge that this game exists uh, due to their strong opposition to Rowling and her comments. And I wondered what you guys think about this. Where, what's your stance? How do you feel about this? It's, it's always a complicated discussion when you start talking about, can you separate the art from the artist? Um, because it, even though she's not directly involved with this, she will monetarily benefit. She still owns the property. You know, she, she sold this license. She's, she, she will monetarily benefit from sales of this game. And can you, how do you feel? How do you reconcile that? You know, it, that's always (laughs) kind of a tough one. Um, Mm -hmm. But I've, if the art does not reflect the artist, um, I'm with Rick on that one. you, You can kind of separate it, right? 
I mean, there's levels of it. I mean, she made comments. She has antiquated views. She, it's it. It's a different level of um, wrong than some other artists who've done physical and mental abuse. Do you, you see what I mean? It's kind of like, like it. You know, because because if you're like, oh, I still buy Harry Potter, yeah, but I don't listen to Cosby anymore. You know, mm-hmm. on one hand, he. Did, I feel like what he did was a little worse than like somebody saying like, I hate these people. I I, I don't know. I don't really. It's 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 one of those things that I think you have to judge for yourself. Absolutely. So for, for people who don't want the game, don't buy the game. Here's another. Who, yeah. Here's another reality. There's a whole world of stuff that we participate in, put money towards, that supports people in the world that have views that we would totally disagree with, but they've mm-hmm. never voiced those opinions. So where do you draw the line? Do we um, start talking about the child labor that builds our phones and clothes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? So um, you know, like it's such a complex topic because sure, there are products that I buy and and things that support people with terrible views that that haven't spoken. But Rowling has spoken, yeah. you know, she's spoken loudly. And um, while I typically tend to feel that if I never bought something that was by someone who was terrible, I would never buy anything in terms of art. <laughs> you know, uh, authors, many of the authors that I love have terrible, terrible viewpoints and actors and filmmakers and musicians and there's a point where if you if you can only you know support the ones who who espouse the beliefs that you hold then you have a very limited very limited selection but at the same time i'm seeing a lot of commentary on social media and um is it hurtful to our trans brothers and sisters is it hurtful to this community if I show support for this game, if I play this game and talk about it in a positive light, mm-hmm. uh, if I enjoy it, you know, am I hurting people here's something, by doing that? Here's something else to consider. J.K. Rowling didn't develop this game. Mm-hmm. The people sitting behind the desks working tirelessly who take paychecks to put food on their tables for their families, those are the ones that we go to support. Right? Um, right. In a sense. So, you know, it's 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 everybody who was involved in the making of this game. And there's people out there that worked very hard to create this. And for mm-hmm. some of them, this is the start of their career. You know, and I'm sure many of these people are good people. And they're I, probably good people. I do believe Benefit there are the more doubt. good people in the world than than are horrible. And, and I would say that you show me one person that is you know, hurt by her comments in the Harry Potter world. And I'll show you, uh, you know, you can find another trans person who will attribute Harry Potter saving their life in some way. I mean, yeah, that's absolutely going to be true. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's not, it, it's a gray thing. And that's like, why I said, it is yeah. a very gray thing. And that's part of why I wanted to have this conversation because there are, there's just, there's so many, so many factors to consider. And, uh, one thing is, I, I do know we have uh, some trans members in our community, mm-hmm. and I, if you guys are willing, I would love to hear your thoughts. If you want to shoot an email to us at info at we just love games.com, info at we just love games.com, I would really love to hear your take on it um, because yeah. you're the ones that it affects. And I, I want to know if if I support this game, is that something that that hurts you? Because if I'm hurting someone with my actions, I don't want to do that. You know, yeah. if it's if it's a simple thing, I, I can just not. But it's so complicated. It's so complicated. But thank you guys for having this very thorny discussion with me. Yeah, we we're all about the thorny. Yeah, that was kind of a heavy way to very thorny to start off. 
<laughs> start off the yeah. show it's i mean but it's it's a topic that needs addressed and mm -hmm. and yeah i mean that goes for anything that we talk about on on the show if there's something that you know seems to be out of line with you know someone that kind of rubs them the wrong way just like send us an email let us know because that way we can address it you know what i mean yeah i mean i mean while i i unless tend to... <laughs> sorry no i didn't want to interrupt no, i was you, gonna Shaleen. say it, it may not you know it, it it may not change what we do per se but it may change how we approach certain subjects yes. if that makes sense at the yeah. very least, we will end the day more educated than we began it with a wider understanding mm -hmm. of the world and the people in it. And um, we do want to hear from you, our community. And that call for emails is not only for our trans brothers and sisters, it's for everyone in the community. Everybody. Um, I'd like to hear all of your opinions. This is a complicated topic and let's mm -hmm. open those floodgates and talk about it. Um, yeah, but I one think that would I make serve say, for some good discussion on the show. <laughs> I mm. think so too. Yeah, uh, I did think of a, an example in which um, my behavior changed due to this kind of feedback. I was playing a game. I, I streamed it on our channel. Uh, what was it called? Um, I don't know. It was it was an RPG, a point and click mm. RPG, and it was a Western style, and it was stick figures. Uh, it was me. it was hilarious and was i was that really like enjoying horse jack it. horse jack bro man no. or something no uh it was a unique thing it wasn't like a, a licensed thing oh. but i was playing this game and i adored it I, I was streaming it i was like reading the the dialogue and doing voices and it was west of loathing times. west of loathing thank you rick I was really enjoying West of Loathing. I was talking about it um, very vocally on every platform that I that I engage with. And I received uh, a message from a person who worked with the creator of this game and who alleged that, um, that she had been uh, the victim of some, some misconduct by this creator. And I was bothered so deeply by this that I quit playing the game and never spoke of it again. Hmm. And just the knowledge that my um, my support of this game, my vocal support of this game brought this person trauma mm -hmm. was really disturbing to me. And I don't know. It's, it's very mindful. These things are so complicated. And yeah. Yeah. yeah, I mean, somebody, I was in a seminar for work the other day and somebody, the, the presenter said something that really sort of stuck with me. He said, everybody dis, everybody's in disagreement. No two people have the exact same perspective or opinions about the world. Mm -hmm. And it was just something like, yeah, that's, that's true. Yeah, like that's we generally true. surround ourselves with people who have the same sort of mindset but we never actually fully 100% agree with each other. Mm -hmm. So, And it's, Cephalon it's, Kiwi brings up the point, was that person telling the truth? I don't know. But I, I am inclined to believe believe women. His conduct is, is, yeah. I, I, those are heavy allegations to make. If you're going to make them, you better be damn serious about them, right? Mm -hmm. So, and, and, you know, we have seen that there's a small percentage of people who have made those allegations um, and they turned out to be false. You know, they came forward and said no or admitted. But still, for the most part, you know, on the subject mm -hmm. of misconduct, especially in the gaming industry, it's we've so seen that that's been... Place. It's so but like, you know, to go back to the central part of the discussion, am I going to play Harry, uh, Hogwarts Legacy? I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I don't. Even the game really looks beautiful. I think so. that the developers did a fantastic mm -hmm. job. I still watch Harry Potter because I enjoy the movies and the characters and the storyline. J.K. Rowling is not a reflection of, you know, Rupert Grint and his character and his personal life you know so his performance in that movie was fantastic daniel radcliffe well i mean you'd give it a good college try but, <laughs> but i i don't know it's anyways it's a good good topic to talk about chalene yeah absolutely um 
Uh, apologies. So uh, let's get on to what we really, really want to talk about today. Elden Ring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. We're like 25 minutes in. Bastards nerfed my sword. <laughs> Tell us about it, Rick. How do you really feel? I got I'm just Larval gonna... Tear. I got the Sword of Night and Flame. And I completely reconfigured my character to use this overpowered crazy sword, which had all these different like boosh boosh things. It was amazing. Vendors drinking. And uh, they nerfed it. I mean, it was super OP. Just like it was terribly, terribly overpowering. Um, but they nerfed it and it sucks. And my com my build is completely wasted now. So I ended up getting another larval tier and I'm about to uh, redo my whole build. But, Let's be uh, honest here, though. You're going to start a new character like 13 more Some times point. after that. So, yeah. Well, there's a lot of different You do tend to be an altaholic. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yep. Altaholic. Um, well, I got to try sword and board, you know, knight. <sighs> you know, I got to try like Fifi <laughs> bow. Um, and I'm doing like a mage build right now. So the whole idea was that I had like a staff and a sword and... Um, the sword the sword had two attacks it was like a fire flame fling thing and then you could follow it up with a comet beam and it would just melt faces <laughs> like raiders of the lost ark and it like it it got nerfed to less than half the damage output like that's how bad it got nerfed so if it did a thousand damage it now does like 400 ouch it's, it's so bad like they went completely in the opposite direction so um you know, they nerfed a couple of different things. There were some summons that <clears throat> what somebody would do is they would put all this crazy gear on, summon a mimic tier, which would make a direct copy of you with all your gear and skills. Ooh. And then they would switch back to their normal equipment to like move around and run. So then they've got this AI control them in a big like tanky form, just doing all these crazy damage attacks while they're just planking from the background. It was, they was just melting falses too. So they, they changed that. Uh, it does less damage and the um, it's not as uh, aggressive. There was another Horfrost Stomp summon, which just... Pardon me? Horfrost. Horfrost. Starts with an H. Um, that nerfed... They nerfed that summon too, so it doesn't do as much damage and the attack is slower. Um, they did boost some of the sorceries that I use. So when you play as an astrologer, you start with the glint stone pebble. What am I doing off? <laughs> no, no, keep going. I What'd keep I going. Nothing. I'm just, my mind is keep going. So I started I as an astrologer and you start with a staff and a sword and you have the glint stone pebble, which is like a, a ranged sorcery attack. Um, and when you eventually found and beat a boss and got to buy some more sorceries, they're all super bad. Terrible. Like you'd spend all this like rune, like your money on them and you get them and they do like no damage whatsoever and use a ton of magic. And, um, <laughs> yeah. And then you were just like, I guess I'm using the pebble fling, fling, fling. <laughs> And so and one of them was called oh, the no. one of them was called the Great Glintstone Pebble and it was like this giant, you know, version Is that of a it. reference to Flintstones? I don't <laughs> think so. They just call like the sorceries Glintstone sorceries. Oh. Um, that's that Glintstones. Meet, meet my Glintstone. Glintstone. <laughs> whack whack whack. <laughs> and uh <laughs> dude, I got to tell you. So when you fire the great one before this patch, it would like go foop and then like slowly go towards the enemy and then disappear because the range was horrible. So it was like a shotgun. No, it was just one. It was like one big shard and um, it didn't go very fast or far and it didn't do a ton of damage for the amount of FP that it costs. So what this patch did was they're like, all right, we increased the range, the summon time, and we've lowered the FP cost. So it's like more viable, right? Well, I started trying out this like great glenstone thing and it's still like i'm gonna go back to the pebble and ping with the pebble oh <laughs> like, that's it's, terrible it's so bad um 
you know, but I'm at the point where I'm just like, I'm stuck almost because, you know, the sword I have sucks now. My armor is horrible because it was geared towards this other build. And like, I keep getting one shotted by everything. And so I have to, you know, I'm at the point where I'm like, I'm watching videos on like people's astrologer builds like back towards like when I was just doing more magey type things, it was better. So, so anyway, that's, they did a lot of nerfing with this patch. Um, they added some new NPCs uh, and NPC. They extended some of the quest lines and fixed the quest lines. Tell me um, about the new NPC. What does he do? I don't know much about the new NPC, actually. I didn't read well, up on it. His name is Jarbairn. It is? Um, yeah. Uh, and I don't know what he does. But it also added some summonable NPCs and some new quest phases mm-hmm. for missions involving Dialos, Nefeli Lu, Kenneth Haight, and Gatekeeper Gostock. Nice. Oh, and another big update. Any NPCs on the map, it now adds a marker showing you where they are, which is Ooh. fantastic. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Yes. I still think that I screwed something up in this game because, like, I have to talk about it, but I think I screwed something up. Yeah. So we'll you want to save that, that for gameplay time? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Sounds good. Uh, well... Uh, now that we had a bit of, of more um, of lighthearted stuff, let's take the show on down again uh, with, with a bad working conditions in the gaming industry story. Um, so today's uh, big news was about Moon Studio, the developer of Ori and the Blind Forest and Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Um, there was a, a pretty extensive report uh, stating that this was an oppressive workplace with many, many issues with crunch, verbal abuse, and poor organization. Uh, GamesBeat reports that Xbox is no longer working with the studio uh, because of a difficult relationship. Uh, the, it, the report is very lengthy and it includes a, a range of allegations. Uh, most of which center on the studio's founders, Thomas Mailer and Janady Coral. I have no idea how to pronounce that, and I apologize for the mispronunciation. Uh, constant arguments, a crunch culture in which the employees are expected to be available at all hours, on weekends, and a steady stream of racist, sexist, and anti-Semitic banter, according to this IGN article by Kat Bailey. And a quote from one of the developers states that it's an oppressive workplace for sure, but it's hard to pinpoint one thing because in isolation, all of these incidents, if they happen once, you would think they are small things. But when you're dealing with that for multiple years, you're going to see the decline of people's mental health. I can say that for myself personally, I was properly messed up after we finished. I've never been depressed until that moment. I lost my passion for my job because they drummed it out of me. Uh, Another developer said, were the founders both belligerent? Yes. In my opinion, was it limited to those two? Yes. Unprofessional on an hourly basis? Yes. Harassing? Yes. The report paints a picture of a studio with a perfectionist culture that rarely provided positive feedback and was very much the cause of burnout in their employees. So um, these were both widely critical successes these games they were beautiful beautiful games incredible games um fantastic games but it's it's a real shame that they were made in this type of an environment um why do people in leadership roles always have to be narcissists it's terrible i mean yeah I, it's terrible. I'm curious yeah. to see what will more what what will further develop about this story. Yeah. Right, because it, it the article doesn't really. Uh, there's a lot of generalizations. Toxicity. Mm-hmm. What does toxicity mean? Right. 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 <clears throat> it's it it's hard. I mean, if you let terrible people stop you from enjoying things or doing things that you like i mean that kind of lets them win right 
I mean, there are other people built this game other than just some terrible people. I mean, I, I they, well, they in the, yeah, too. I, I don't, I mean, it's a great game with a great story that I don't think reflects any of those things. So, yeah, but I think let, here, that. here we're talking about the people that work for this developer though. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is, which is different. Yeah. And as we know, we've, we've discussed in the past on this show, <clears throat> There are many, many studios where things have, have not been pleasant at the workplace that have produced games that we still played and enjoyed. Um, it's a similar, <coughs> a similar but no less complicated discussion to the one we had earlier regarding J.K. Mm -hmm. Rowling. And so, so let me ask you guys this. What do you, <coughs> what do you think it's going to take for the industry to change? Uh, well, the thing is that it's not just limited to this one industry, although we see it uh, very heavily in this industry, it's, it's, it's a culture. It's, it's an issue with our, our culture today. Yeah. And Are you talking we're work, gonna have to workplace see, culture? Yes, workplace culture. Mm -hmm. We're going to have to see some shifts in the way that we treat workers in general um, and the respect that people are given uh, both in the workplace and just in, in every aspect of life, mm -hmm. you know, we need to, to have more compassion and empathy for our fellow man. We need to and, respect life. Mm -hmm, that's the only way these things will change. I think, you know, there is a silver lining that sort of came out of the pandemic and all this. And, and that is that workers need to be treated better. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, it, um, one thing I was going to say is like for the longest time, game development was very much a boys club. Um, well, I very, mean, where did it start? Time. Rick call of duty. When, but even before like... that, I mean, you go back to the Apple, you go back to Apple's foundings. It was three dudes in a garage. I mean, the whole thing has Microsoft. always been a boys club. And I think that mentality persists because it wasn't very recently maybe in the last 15 years or so where women started getting into it a bit more heavily. Okay. Like I haven't. Big... Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's actually factually untrue. We were always there. We were well, always there. But what I'm saying is the kind of push for STEM initiatives, mm -hmm. right? Like only recent, big... only last five years. There's in, like, that's what Carrie from the Mythbusters was on about. And that was in the two thousands was getting women mm -hmm. into engineering and math and science. Mm -hmm. And like, Game of development course. was always kind of a part of that, but it's even though women have always been there, yes, but their visibility and their respect has only started to come about yes. in the last 15 years because this whole thing started as basically a boys club. Mm -hmm. So it's got deep roots in misogyny, and that's why I think so many studios now have this issue. I'm wondering if we Googled these two CEOs' names, the founders. Are they going to be white cisgender males? Probably. I don't know. I mean, but I'm, I'm going to look. It's it's it it's a problem that goes yes. back really far because they, you know, it's it's just it sucks that this happens, but I'm glad that these things are getting weeded out slowly. I mean, the initiatives that have been taken to make gaming development companies more equal to everyone involved and less crunch time. So better working conditions The that where unions are starting to kind of get into this. Mm -hmm. I, th I think that's regulation is definitely key. Yeah. yeah. There needs to be some so, regulation in the gaming and industry. representation and representation, but not, but not, positions. but not, or, but not in a know. way that, that not in a way that that says that a company or that shows just tokenism oh well no no no, no. right that's don't hire about. people just because you need to meet quotas hire them no, because that, yeah, they're good people and about. they're talented regardless of who they are right right yeah but, but that said but yeah representation is important and i think Absolutely. that you know it's but yeah yeah hmm I don't know. Shaleen, you look like you have things to say or not say. Not really. 
not really. <laughs> You're not. Are you biting your tongue? Not really. I just, I, this, my heart hurts. I think that the dames, I think you guys should open up a game development studio and call it Dame <laughs> Studio. <laughs> right? Oh, dear. Sometimes yeah, like, I have really good you ideas. Know people, people would have problems with the fact that they're referring to themselves as dames. I know, I mean, right? Like, like the Dixie you... Chicks. Now they just call themselves the Chicks. Well, that's because of the connotations. Of <laughs> well, yeah, that's, yes. that's a whole different. That's yeah, whole that's different. different that's thing. different. Extremely different thing. I just, guys, I'm tired. I'm tired. And I I think I'd like to go watch some TV. Um. <laughs> And you know what is something that's on my my watch list? The Halo TV show. Of course, I'm not going to actually watch it because it's on Paramount Plus. And who's got Paramount Plus? But if I did watch it... <laughs> is it on Paramount Plus? What is, even is Paramount Plus? I didn't know it existed before the Halo TV series was announced. But a lot of people have been highly, highly concerned because of a particular comment of the season one showrunner, Stephen Kane. He said uh, he made this comment regarding his preparation with 343 Industries, who, who are the current developer for the Halo games. We didn't look at the game. We didn't talk about the game. We talked about the characters and the world, so I never felt limited by it being a game. This quote was pulled from this Variety article, and the internet went nuts. You know, everybody was furious and thinking, oh, this is going to be garbage. I actually didn't find that concerning at all, because the Halo universe is, is very deep and very rich, and there is so much content out there. I'd rather that they didn't approach it from the standpoint of translating a game. Uh, I'd rather that they look at the stories and the people and the characters and the world. Because the things that make a game work are not the same things that make a TV show work. Mm -hmm. And I want them to make a good TV show if they're making a TV show. You, you, um, you could have picked better language. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like this is wildly taken out of context, yeah. but um, this is a, a Variety article by Adam B. Very, and um, yeah, it's it's just uh, it's um, really interesting, really interesting. The show premieres on March twenty fourth, and this has been in progress for like 17 years they've been trying wow. to bring halo to the big screen in one way or another there was a peter jackson project that was going to be a feature film that fell apart in the 2000s and um there was six years of development by amblin television in the Oops. 2010s that didn't work out and um yeah it was it was just it was a mess it, it's been a mess and um of course, Halo is insanely prop popular, and I, I feel like what they're doing here is more than trying to target the video game audience. I think they're trying to make a good military sci-fi show. That's what I'm seeing. Um, mm -hmm. This is a swing for a broad audience, said Tanya Giles, who is the chief programming officer at Paramount+. Plus. My hope is this expands what the Paramount Plus brand can mean. So um, Paramount Plus is also apparently the network with the Star Trek shows on it. The current new That's Star right. Trek shows. That's right, Picard on it. and oh. yeah, the one Kate with, Mulgrew's uh, new animated series, Prodigy. Ooh, I didn't know that existed. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. And interesting. Star Trek Lower Decks, which, by the way, is so good, you guys. Mm -hmm. It's so good if you ever get the chance. Maybe that would be a good entry show for you, Rick, into the, and Star, there's the oh, show, Star Trek universe. The show with the starring the lady that used to be on The Walking Dead. Um, she was Sasha on The Walking Dead. Right. I don't know her uh, Discovery. Yes. Discovery. That one's on there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Maybe I should get Paramount Plus. This is the, really interesting. I really like that the. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen in the trailer here, but the, the female actress, where is she? Uh, there's a female actress, Natasha, here, Natasha McElhone. What's what's her name? It right sounds here? like you're saying that name horribly wrong. Mc, 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 Elhone? 
<laughs> Natasha Micklehone? Micklehone? I don't know. Anyways, I don't know if you recognize her, but she was the girlfriend or the, the girl that Jim Carrey met on the Truman Show. The Truman Show. I haven't seen that. You know right. that movie? Yeah, right. Truman, Truman Show. Truman Show. She know, was the girl that he like I constructed remember. a magazine mm-hmm. face quilt. Yes. <laughs> thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyways. I was That's I was so gonna say one of the only things that sticks in my head about Star Trek was hearing um oh, why is his name the, the guy who plays Picard? Why is his name not in my head? Patrick Stewart. Uh, Patrick Stewart. Patrick Stewart. Patrick Stewart was he was talking to I forget who. I think it might have been like the guys at Nerdist and, and he said that when he first, you know, got the part and they're like you know, he's like, wait, why is this guy named Picard? I'm, you know, I'm British. And they're like, oh, well, he's he's a French guy. And then so there was like this big back and forth because he's like, I can't I can't play this guy as a French guy. Could you imagine me on the bridge going engage, you know, instead of <laughs> engage? You <know? laughs> and you're like, oh, yeah, that wouldn't have worked. <laughs> that is so brilliant. I always love that little story. He's like, I can't do it like that. It's got to be engage. <laughs> engage. <laughs> oh, man, Picard's the best. You know, the, the funny thing, though, is that the new Picard Star Trek series is set in France more or less well he he is like that's where he right so yeah he he has like a french chateau with like horses and stuff in in tng yeah but he's just like i can't play him as like a straight up like french dude with a french accent he's like i gotta have the british french thing yeah 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 (laughs) yeah if you uh i i totally recommend star trek lower decks it's it's like the animated series of star trek and it doesn't focus on the bridge crew. It has nothing to do with the higher ups. Oh, that's interesting. It has yeah. nothing to do with the higher ups and everything to do with the with the people on the bottom of the command chain. In, this reminds literally me of in the like, lower decks, and they just like they totally downstairs. Like yes. you see, and you have like the, the yeah. servants. and yeah. they totally hate their jobs, and they're all just trying to get through. And they like <laughs> it's so funny. It's it's really good. But anyways, Star Trek stack for you. Star stack. Fantastic. Um, but yeah, I I don't think this quote means that you need to be heavily concerned that the Halo TV show is going to be bad. Um, I think that you need to be heavily concerned because the the live action Cortana is is absolute garbage. Uh, so let's keep our ire <laughs> focused on the correct things. Okay, guys, let's let's focus. We gotta keep focus. Uh, but that's it. That's that's all I have for Halo TV show. Um, I do want to move on to something else. Uh, we don't usually talk about Humble Bundle on the show, uh, but I did want to mention this one because they have released, uh, I believe this just started today, a Humble Bundle that is raising money for relief for Ukraine. It is called the Stand with Ukraine Bundle. And um, this, uh, this is, uh, it includes almost 100 games, including Satisfactory, Back for Blood, Slay the Spire, Metro Exodus, Kerbal Space Program, and the Spyro Remastered Trilogy. If you pay at least, um, okay, this is a Rock Paper Shotgun article. Uh, so the 50, price 51, is- 51, 31 or more. <laughs> 5131 mm-hmm. US dollars. Thank you, vendor. You will get all of these games and dozens more. Uh, this is available until March 25th at 6 p.m. And you will get 122 games. So some of these are really excellent games. It also includes some software and game making assets, tabletop role playing books, 3D printer files, and uh, most of the cool. games are Steam keys. And the proceeds will be split between four groups. RASM for Ukraine, providing medical supplies. The International Rescue Committee, providing aid and helping resettle civilians. The International Medical Corps, providing supplies and support. And Direct Relief, which provides health services. Direct Relief. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely, uh, if you... Uh, have some money to spare. This is a great way to both support people who need it right now and also get some some fantastic games. So. Just some quick statistics. So far, they have raised $3,473,117 wow. uh, towards this cause. 
And a total bundles of 61,137 have been sold across multiple platforms. So great That's job. Amazing. Great job, humble, humble Bundle users. That's cool. I never thought to think of purchasing 3D printing files on Humble Bundle. It's probably a really good place for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's really neat. Oh, Here your octopus, go. Rick. I love yeah, it. My I love it so much. <laughs> For the audio folks, describe what it is that you hold in your hands. This is the rocks bust on top of an octopus leg thing, and its legs jiggle. And my wife 3D printed it in gold, so it's a gold rocktopus. Brilliant. Brilliant. You know, I don't know if that's like. It's like all I can think of is Scorpion King. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, that's brilliant. Right? Just, it looks it looks it looks more like the rock than the Scorpion King does though. <laughs> it does look like I'm holding something dirty on my camera because it's it's, 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 it's blurring it's it out. out. That's <laughs> fun. That's fun. Oh, this my is goodness. a Rocktopus plug. Oh. I was, I, I think <laughs> Get out of my head. I was hoping you wouldn't go there, but get out of my head. You it guys. when you walk. <laughs> Who needs to put a bell on Rick? <laughs> Is... Put the rock. <laughs> okay. Anywho's... Okay. And we're rolling gonna put this back over so here. did you guys want to watch the starfield video or sure or no? let me cue how it long up. is it let me cue it's it like up. a six minute video uh, we can watch a little bit of it maybe it the doesn't, thing. It do they show really... any gameplay is it no. like <laughs> i don't I just is it just gonna make me mad is it it's just a couple of guys talking that's all it is i watched it okay um, tell us about it rick so they're going over and kind of waxing poetic about how this this RPG harkens back to kind of the more expansive RPGs. Less go here, go there, go here, go there, kind of linear sort of uh, storyline. Um, you know, there is like a more concept art. There is uh, a bit where they, they show you a robot companion kind of. Ooh. Uh, that was that was it. It's like this kind of like loader looking thing and it like talks to you. Shut they talk up and a bit take my about money. Take my money. Take my money. <laughs> they talk about how there's different factions in the game, like the the like the pirates, and they're like, you can join the pirates, but they're like, well, what if you want to be a good guy, but also like be with the pirates? Well, then like you can actually like tattletale on the pirates. Like you're like they've really designed this game in a way where you can do everything. You know how like there's times where we play Fallout 4 and we're like, why can't we tell this guy that this dude's about to kill him? why don't we have that option? And that's kind of what they're gunning for in this. <laughs> Vod, like, Vod in the chat says it's time to flip a table again at the lack of real details. Should I, yeah, should yeah, it, yeah. Is, it is very vague. <laughs> I am utterly disgusted by this this video of concept it's art. It's just a round table discuss yes. discussion of empty promises. Well, this looks... That's the robot. <laughs> okay, so we see um, the hey, That looks great. It looks kind of like loader bot from, yeah. from Bo tales from the borderlands yeah yeah i love but like that's bot. that's what they're getting at they're trying to create a, a world where you can do whatever you want no matter what direction you take wait what the hell so is this they're uh, talking this about this gameplay looks they, like it's from 2008 I'm that disgusted. that's not starfield they're, gameplay is it no they're talking that was no, oblivion oh they're talking about how they're <laughs> implementing a dialogue system that's more of a mini game like oblivion's was and rather than it's just about picking the right dialogue, it's it's more about persuasion than just picking the right thing okay. or unlocking the right thing to say. So th well, that's all it is, is just a discussion how they're basically like, we're going to try to do what we did before, but better. Um, I, I'm i starting to get to where Shaleen's at and like, they've got nothing. <laughs> I'm starting to believe. So you remember before Death Stranding came out, I was like, there is no game. Death Stranding doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. This is an elaborate ruse. So Hideo Kojima can hang out with, with uh, Norman Reedus. You know, that's all this is. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm starting to feel about Starfield. It doesn't even exist. 
And it's it's just Todd Howard using his imagination. Like, do you remember when we played the amazing adventures of Captain Spirit and we were like in his imagination? That's what's happening with Todd Howard right now <laughs> with these Starfield videos. You know how wrong you were with Death Stranding, though? I hope I'm equally wrong with Starfield. <laughs> yeah, I'm really curious to see what it even is. <laughs> I'm so concerned about the fact that we've seen no gameplay. Just show us something, just a little something, just a little something. It, any word on Bethesda doing a showcase event this year? Uh, no, hmm. there is no in-person E3. So it well, would be a, a digital event if there was anything. They haven't announced it yet. When is it hmm. supposed to be? May? It's you, not going to happen. You, no. No. June? Isn't it in June? It's in June because I always miss okay, my June. mom's birthday. Not gonna when happen. When I go to E3. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. Blomp. Um so our our final final story for the day yeah. is uh, a more uplifting one. Uh I get a lot of weird video game press releases, right? And one of them actually caught my eye today. It mentioned that video games are being used to help with stroke rehabilitation. And this was actually a press release that I was sent from the University of Missouri uh, at Mizzou. So um, they've been doing a study over there in terms of rehabilitation therapy using video games. So they used a motion sensor video game called Recovery Rapids to allow patients recovering from a stroke to improve their motor skills and affected arm movements at home while checking in periodically with a therapist via telehealth. And the researchers found that the game paced therapy led to improved outcomes similar to a highly regarded form of in-person therapy, which is known as constraint-induced therapy. And this only required one-fifth of the hours that that traditional therapist um, therapy would take. So this approach saved time and money and was much more convenient for the patient uh, And tele as telehealth has boomed in popularity during the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, and we've got a quote here from uh, Rachel Prophet, assistant professor at the MU School of Health Professions. As an occupational therapist, I have seen patients from rural areas drive more than an hour to come to an in-person clinic three to four days a week where the rehab is very intensive, taking three to four hours per session, and the therapist must be there the whole time. With this new at-home gaming approach, we are cutting costs for the patient and reducing time for the therapist while still improving convenience and overall health outcomes. So it's a win-win. By saving time for the therapists, we can also now serve more patients and make a broader impact on our communities. Traditional rehab exercises uh, have a tendency to be really repetitive and monotonous. And for those reasons, patients tend not to stick to them. But this Recovery Rapids video game helps patients to look forward to their rehabilitation uh, because they're completing challenges in a fun interactive environment, play in a video game. And researchers found that the patients really stuck with their routines uh, doing their prescribed exercises with this. And uh, a sample of what they're doing, according to Profit, the patient is virtually placed in a kayak. And as they go down the river, they perform arm motions, simulating paddling, rowing, scooping up trash, swaying from side to side to steer, and reaching overhead to clear out spider webs and bats. So it makes the exercises fun. As they progress, the challenges get harder, and we conduct check-ins with the participants via telehealth to adjust their goals, provide feedback, and discuss the daily activities that they want to resume as they improve. Uh, nearly 800,000 Americans have a stroke each year, according to the CDC, mm -hmm. and two-thirds of stroke survivors report that they can't use their affected limbs to do normal daily activities, including making a cup of coffee, cooking a meal, or playing with their grandchildren. Uh, Prophet says that she is very passionate about helping patients get back to all the activities they love to do and anything that she can do as a therapist to help in a creative way while also saving time and money is the ultimate goal. So this was really, really interesting. I thought that this was a, a really beautiful example of what video games can make possible in contrast to other 
other mediums of entertainment. And I, I just really enjoyed it. There is also a peer reviewed study that's available. I linked it in here, Bender, in case you'd like to check it out later. I, I, I know you. Uh, like yeah, I just, I briefly yeah. skimmed over it. Um, it looks like a really interesting study. I mean, mm -hmm. this is, stroke rehab is not my wheelhouse. Um, so, yeah. but I, I really, the only thing I can critique, critique in terms of the, the study design itself is that they had significant loss to follow up. So right. they had aimed to recruit over a thousand individuals of those 301 just didn't contact them. Um, and then of the 198 that they recruited, they lost even more to follow up. So their final sample size was quite low. Um, so, but that's not surprising because if we think about stroke vi victims, they're more likely to be an older demographic of people. Um, and why would they shy away from something like this? Technology is intimidating. Right. So right. there's a, I mean, it's great in concept. I think this is a fantastic study. But how do we market it to the people who are at highest risk for stroke? Mm -hmm. And how do we make sure that they adhere to that kind of thing? So I don't know. I feel like, I don't know about you guys, but some of the people in my family who um, I have handed a gaming controller to, like my grandparents or my great aunts and uncles, um, it gives them tremendous anxiety that they don't know what to do. But Fender, this is a motion sensing game. Oh, I missed that Shut part. Up. It's a motion sensing game. And you know the success that the Wii had in mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. elderly facilities. Yeah. And even with my own grandparents, nobody was more a Luddite than my grandparents. And uh, you'll remember they were just shooting everything in Link's shooting gallery, just... Um, couple little little sharp shooters yeah. over there and well they definitely um, showed that the that what they were trying to do was an improvement and it worked well um i think i'd like to see mm -hmm. some follow-up studies on this that's really interesting yeah. thanks for sharing yeah thank you that's all i have for news today oh okay well we should probably roll into our stocks Uh, Rick, do you want to take us through GameStock this week? Sure. We since would like since to, our last show. <clears throat> we would <clears throat> like to point out that the plus minus values are based on our last show and not closing day costs. <sighs> so Sony uh, closed out at $106.12, and that's up $8.81 since last show. Microsoft closed out at $300.43. That's up $20 something or whatever from last show. Nintendo <laughs> is closed out at uh, $64.56. That's up by $2.08 since last show. Take Two has closed out at $151.67. And that's down by $1.82 since <laughs> our last show. Activision uh, is at $78.00. 76 cents. That's also down by 13 cents since a week ago, which happened nope, to be our last nope, show. Nope. Since, no. since, nope. since, since 4 p.m. Oh. <laughs> because I did the top half and Vendor did the bottom half. Okay. So Activision is, uh, ooh, I kicked my camera, is uh, down by 13 cents closing today. Uh, Ubisoft <laughs> is at $37.74, up by 94 cents. That is today only not from last show. EA is closed out at $126.28. That's up by a buck ten, not from last show, but today. Uh, ten cent is uh, at fifty-one dollars and seventy cent, and that is up by three dollars and twelve cent as of today, not the last show. Yeah, like as the other ones were. As you guys have probably guessed, this was the the small in but fierce internal fight that we had right before the show started. Uh, anytime that I do the stocks, I do them uh, with the plus minus spread being as of since the last time we recorded a show. And anytime that either of the guys does it, it's just today's plus or minus spread. Yeah. And, and we had a, a, a fierce, passionate fight about it. <laughs> Me and Bender were convinced that, the plus minus had never been based on the last show. I was convinced because I have only ever done, done it that, that way. 
And mm-hmm. Shalene's like, no, I've always disclaimered. And we're like, we don't. Why would I do all. the math in my head compared to the last show if the price difference is right there in front of me from the day? It's just so much easier. <sighs> Once again, Shalene is right. And we are wrong. Usually. Yep. Mm. It was really funny. Anyways. We need to talk about what our community has been playing. I've got some lovely screenshots for you guys. I'm excited. I love this. Um, And uh, yeah, last week, Shalene and I weren't able to cover everybody's screenshots. So we do apologize. Um, But uh, oh, I got to include this one. I missed it. And it's it's got to go in the folder. Give me a second. Can you share screen with us? Screenshots. Yes. Um, You're sharing screens. Uh, give me a second, give me a second. Uh, so the first screenshot comes to us from, uh, I believe this is Brie. Don't know if you can. Oh, that's a cool screenshot. Yeah. So, uh, once again, on the Horizon Zero Dawn train, um, so uh, she sent us this awesome picture uh, of the main character. What's her name again? I can't remember. Eloy. Eloy. Uh, hovering over water like Jesus uh, with some sort of like shield constellation thing. It's um, it's like a glider, I think, in the game. Oh, like a parachute hang, kind of thing. A hang glider, parasailer. Yeah. And then, then there's there's like this amazing backdrop of like a sunset or sunrise. Not quite sure. Looks great. Yeah. Uh, this 30. picture, this picture is from, who, that's so brutal. Who is this from? Oh, this Doom. is from Deus Mortem and you are correct, Rick. Uh, they say Doom Eternal Ancient Gods Part 1 is the shit. And, uh, uh, also graphic image be warned. So it's like splitting of a skull through horns and stuff. Looks well, yeah, because it's a demon gruesome. he's tearing apart, so it's okay. Yeah. Uh, we also have this picture from Taz. Uh, he says, um, uh, sends us a picture from Sea of Thieves. It is a beautiful sunset with some palm trees on one of my favorite islands. Can you guess what it is just from nope. the picture? Nope. Summer meets hideaway. It is. Nicely done. Aww. Somebody's been putting in the time. Sailing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, we also have this one from Brandon and 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 Don. Um, it is a Fallout 76 picture and they found the nocturnal rolling pin and they say nice. jealous question mark. <laughs> so it looks like they're having lots of fun. Um, I also love that it has like 999 bullets <laughs> just like loaded and ready good yes. to go. <laughs> uh, this picture is from Harper Lark oh! and oh! I... It's Look how uh, cute. Uh, he says out for a jaunt with Miles and Spider Man. Yes, the cat is called Spider Man. It's nice. a kitty wearing a Spider Man mask. And then this one, and he says, "Wow, Johnny, there's no need for that." And it's <laughs> a guy giving two fingers, the middle finger. That's from to, Cyberpunk. Uh, a girl with very um pastel colors and she's also wearing um a strange triangular hat on her head and she looks like she's having none of his business i know exactly where that's at that's near the uh, jacket that's near the harbor where you get the monk mission oh okay okay uh and then that's back to back to the picture that i wanted to show you that's not there so that's good I, I really want to show you guys because it's so good. Except I have no idea where it went. I saved. Oh, here it is. Let me let me see if I can. Well, let's just skip through all of these again. And no, it didn't work. Dang it. Can you see it? Oh, yeah. That's really pretty. What okay. is that? Let me go back to. Let me go back to. What are the... you doing? Nothing. Never mind. It's okay. okay. Everything's fine. There. And uh, and Ooh. just so our viewers can see it. There. There's the picture. What is that from? This is from Horizon Zero Dawn. 
Oh, that's wow. astounding. Yeah, I just had to show this. This was Bree's picture, and it's like she's on the top of this like sand dune, and there's like footprints that go off to the left side, and on the right side, there's like a drop off, and it looks really awesome. There's some ruins there was in the background. One set of footprints. That was when Aloy carried you. Yeah. <sighs> Anyways, Rick, what have you been playing? Elden Ring. Oh God, here we go again. What? <laughs> I'm so excited to just talk about Elden Ring for the rest of the show. Look, man, it's like it's the first game in a very long time to to quote Mr. Oh. Oh, he left. Oh. <laughs> what is he doing? He's vacuuming. What was the point of that? Oh, I'm what sorry. Was... Did you say something? I yeah. missed that entirely. <laughs> this is Vendor being jealous that he's not into a game that everybody else. I've is. got FOMO. <laughs> so basically, um, Elden Ring is like the new water cooler game, right? It's so it's so vast and so nonlinear that everyone kind of has their own stories. And I think this is why everybody is talking about it at this point in time. So I've been playing an astrologer and cool. I, I've been doing really good in this game. My build was, you know, I had a staff and I had a sword and that was kind of my build. My armor was a mix of like medium and heavy battle mage kind of thing. And then I was really looking up for a sword to use and, and, this is the kind of game where I will look up certain things because there are secrets that I will never find. And so, like, for instance, there was, Shaleen, you actually posted the tweet where mm -hmm. a dude spent, like, five minutes hitting a wall with a sword, and then the wall disappeared because it's a secret area. Like, how, how are you supposed to find that? as a normal person, right? And there are like, a bunch of don't. spots where it looks like there's a hidden door, but there's no hidden door. No. So mm. I, I, I will not look up story, but I will look up like, what sword do people recommend? And then I'll see like where that's at kind of and go get it. So I got the Sword of Night and Flame and it was awesome. Sword of Night and Flame sounds like the title of a, a YA fantasy romance novel. <laughs> YA? You're, Young adult. Shaleen, yeah. you're, you're I read so a lot of those. Bad. Yeah, it does. I mean, they're good. <laughs> he gripped his hard shaft. The vicar is coming. <laughs> <laughs> so any who's... Um, <laughs> Yeah, it got nerfed. My entire build was completely erased overnight because I spent like a tier and I respect my character. I have another larval tier that I'm going to respect again, but I'm going to go back to kind of what I was doing before, like focused on the staff. Um, you know, I'm at this weird point in the game where I feel a bit stuck, you know? Um, there's a boss in Khalid, which is like, if I don't know if you've got, I don't think you've gotten there, Shaleen, but it's oh, like. Of course not. I'm yeah. still in the starting area. It's full of scarlet rot. It's red. Everything there is terrifying. They have crows that are huge with skulls for heads. They've got dog T-Rex looking things. Uh, this dragon like just wastes me every time I get there. And so I, I get into this like castle area and I'm like, I'm going to go fight the big guy. And it turns out there's something else going on. And uh, so I was like, okay, this is interesting. And then they're like, well, you get to go fight the big guy anyway. So I was like, okay, I'll go fight the big guy. And I'd travel over to the area to fight the big guy. And it's basically Ganon is like kind of what he reminds me of. Like arcade Ganon? No. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Ganon from Zelda. My and... favorite, one of my favorite characters. But Well, he's basically you. He's so handsome. So like. Like I said, he's basically you. Me minus that part. Anyways, continue, Rick. Um, this boss just... <laughs> and I'm dead. I mean, it is the... It is stupid difficult. So I was like, fine. I'll go to this manor where I got out the back door and there was something big, so I ran away. I'll go there. So I go there and I'm like, oh, it's a little dragon thing. Foof, dead. All right, fine. I'll go back to the capital city and see how far I can get in there. So... I work my way around this east side of the capital city. I kill the boss to get into the city. And then as I get into the city, 
I can't make it to the next grace point from the starting point because just everything, poof, dead. So I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Because everything I do, I just die in one hit. And so I go back to like Limgrave and Lake of Lorena. I just lay away everything there with no problem at all. So I was like, all right, I think I got the hang of this. I'll go back to Khalid. Dead. Why? <laughs> so I can't seem to get past this like weird point that I'm at where I and can't. And then they nerf make... your sword. And they nerf my sword. Like, <laughs> so I did that build to try to get through. And so when I finally figured out how to use the sword, they nerfed it. So I was like working with it today. And I'm like, it still kind of works for like mob situations. Um, but uh, I I ended up watching a YouTube video of like other people's astrologer builds. Cause I'm like, what, what are people doing to be a mage? Because I can't be stuck. Right. So it turns out that I missed buying a couple of spells that are really beneficial that I just didn't buy because I was so burnt by buying all those other sorceries and they were terrible. So I didn't buy anything else. I basically just used Glenstone Pebble <laughs> through the whole thing. And so <laughs> turns out that there's some other stuff I should be getting that's better. I just had no idea. Um, and I didn't want to waste rune. So um, I'm going to go kind of rebuild my character. I'm going to take away all my points that I had in faith because that stupid sword and then put him back into intelligence and mind. So I have all the magic and all, or all the FP and all of the intelligence damage. So that way, like, cause my staffs scale with intelligence. So, so yeah, the only thing that's kind of left is I'm not really sure what row, like what armor to wear. Um, it, it's, it's kind of, you know, I, I just, I just don't know what to do with this, with this armor. Um, there were a couple moments that were real fun times in this game that I had recently where I there's this place called the Four Belfries, right? Are there bats in them? No, they're portals to different places. And so one place I portaled to was the beginning, you know, where you fight that thing and it kills you really fast and you kind of fall all the way down to the starting area Shaleen. yeah yeah, yeah that one ones. just yeah he crushed me yeah so uh you get portaled back to there and you can fight him again oh when you're leveled up yeah cool. and so i did that and so I, I load in and i turn around i'm like oh there's some like smoldering butterflies to go get so i walk over to him and then the entire cliff gives away <laughs> die nice like oh you that's lovely game um i'm trying to think of what the other things were that really just kind of messed with me uh in the city there's a lot of jerks with rapiers who are really good with them so watch out for that um there's dragons that are not very fun that suck <laughs> like it's, everything in the game sucks um yeah the i'm sure you've heard of the turtle in the pope hat i saw the turtle in the pope hat not in person but somebody posted a photo of it in discord and i was like if i hadn't already bought this game i would have bought it now <laughs> uh <laughs> yeah he's 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 pretty cool uh yeah that game man is brutal and it's it does give you a sense of achievement when you're done. But anyway, so that's kind of where I'm at with Elden Ring. I defeated Godric. I defeated Raina. I can't remember how to really say her name, but she's the lady in the college. I defeated a bunch of different, like, kind of great enemies and other bosses. I'm stuck on the third boss, if that makes sense. Um, Radan. I'm stuck on him. And uh, my whole goal is to get to the mount, uh, the mountaintop of the giants so I can get this bell bearing to sell to someone so I can buy a certain item and make my weapons better because the stupid somber smithing stone number five. Just, mm. So anyway, dumb. <laughs> Game's so mean to me and I love it. You're addicted. Yes. Mm. But that's all I've been playing is Elden Ring. Wow. Anyway, vendor. Um, 
Well, I've been I've actually hopped back into Outer Worlds. Um and uh, I've been I've been hankering for some solo gameplay. So I thought, you know what? Outer Worlds is a game that I didn't give a chance. I started it in hardcore mode and I got scared of the Manta Queens and I turned it off and I never went back to it. Um, so this time I decided to just boot up a new character in normal mode and I've been playing it and the story is so rich. The dialogue options are some of the best dialogue options I've ever experienced in a video game. And there's this whole world of Outer Worlds that I've never experienced. The game's been out for several years now and I totally missed out on, I don't know. So anyways, I'm, I'm giving it uh, a fair, a fair playthrough right now and I'm really enjoying it. Um, I helped Parvati, uh, prepare for her date with June Lei, um, which was mm -hmm. like, really, we need to travel like to opposite ends of the galaxy just so that you can get a damn casserole. Like, honestly, really, that's what's happening. I died three times trying to get that casserole. <laughs> Oh, Rick, you weren't here when I was telling Shalene about it. So because I'm playing on normal mode and not hardcore yeah. mode, the companions don't die. Yeah. So I'm going through and I'm blasting. So anyways, I just started blasting. And, you know, I kill all the Manda Queens, but my companions die. But then when I kill all the baddies, they just sort of like resurrect from the grasses. And they're like, did you need something? <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's pretty good. Um, I found the gloop gun. Which is the gloop gun. gloop gun. Yes. You've never heard of this? Mm -mm, so no. the gloop gun shoots. It's an experimental gun that you find on a side quest. And it shoots these globs of blue jelly at people. <laughs> and what it does is it makes them levitate for about <laughs> five seconds. And then they fall to the ground and they get a little bit of damage. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's the silliest it. thing ever. So, um, oh my gosh. and you know how the Manta Queens are like with their pinchers and they're coming at yeah, you and they're shooting scary. fire. So I just pull out my gloop gun and I'm like, Bloink! and it's like shoots them and then they like float in the air. They're very comical. Yeah. And then I pull out my, my light, uh, my light rifle machine gun and I'm just like, da -da 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 -da. so yeah. So it's lots of fun. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, uh, I finally, I'm at the point where I'm ready to go to Byzantium. So I haven't been to Byzantium oh. yet, so I'm going to see that for the first time probably this weekend, maybe tomorrow morning over coffee or something like that. But mm -hmm. um, I've also game. gotten back into uh, cycling on my trainer. I don't know if you can see my bike sort of yeah. standing up yeah. in the corner there. Um, it's hooked up to Must my be trainer. Hard to ride that way. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, I've been, yeah, I so threw off my train of thought there. <laughs> Zwift. I've been playing on Zwift. So, and streaming it, which is lots of fun. But this is actually like this week is the first week that I've actually been back on my bike since I injured myself for Christmas. So, mm. yeah. So, um, and then Shalene and I have been doing some sailing in Sea of Thieves. And we explored the new content last Friday, which had just dropped. Um, and uh, that's, I think, now is a good time to sort of segue into your gameplay, Shalene, if you wanted to. Of course. I really enjoyed playing Sea of Thieves with you. It was so fun. The first thing that I did when I logged on was immediately freak out over the new cosmetics for season six. And I, I bought a plunder pass because... <laughs> Rick, she actually you don't understand, bought, yeah. Rick. You don't understand. The cosmetics are like cherry blossom themed, and there's flowers, and there's a cannon flare that shoots flower petals out of your cannon. And there's it's literally the Shaleen DLC. There's a little flower crown you can get for your pirate. Oh, oh, oh. And it's wonderful. And I must have these things. Mm -hmm. And I was so pleased. And they're wonderful. Um, so that was the first thing I did. And then <laughs> after I had my, my shopping under control, uh, vendor was sailing us over to one of the new forts. So I thought I may as well do the forts since we're here, you know, and I'm done shopping. So <laughs> yeah, 30 minutes later, by the way, 
<laughs> so we check out two of these new forts and it was such a fun time. And last week so on the show, Vendor mentioned that the music really, really shines. The soundtrack is just splendid. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I agree so strongly with that sentiment, Vendor. I tweeted out, Rick, I tweeted out a picture of me sitting on one of the sea forts and I said, you know, sea forts is great and all, but I said, you know, the music of this new content is really where this new content shines. And I added Robert, Robin Beanland, who is the director uh, of and composer of the music for Sea of Thieves, all of mm-hmm. the music. And he liked it and he responded like, thank you. And then I was like fangirling all over the place. (laughs) (sighs) Anyways, I think it's I think it's a real shame that he doesn't also have a baked bean company (laughs) uh, with a name like Beanland. Beanland. (laughs) So good. Um, I bet he gets that a lot. I'm so sorry, Mr. Beanland. I bet Um, he gets that not at all. (laughs) Really? I I mean, it's such a perfect opportunity to make baked beans if your name is Beanland. Uh, but anyways, uh, <laughs> Sea of Thieves, uh, this music is is wonderful. It has a lot of Spanish guitar and horns, and I adore it. Uh, I really like the location design as well. Uh, and the ghosts are all like conquistadors with the, the traditional helmets, and um, it's really cool. Uh, I liked the brinestone fort. It was green and overgrown. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, the ruins were, were like sort of jungle themed. It was really great. I loved it. Rick, did you update? No. You should do that. Do that right now. Please. <laughs> yeah. Start sh- that. Um, <laughs> and there's a new mechanic now where you can go through their cupboards and their medicine cabinets in these forts. And I really enjoy that. Just going through everything. Um There is some serious dark magic going down in the prison cells in these forts. Oh, yeah. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. It's it's super suspicious. And I am very interested to see where that goes story-wise or if Mm -hmm. they even develop that at all or if they're just going to let us wonder what kind of of foul sorceries were happening in these forts. Yeah. I have a feeling that's going to be either part of the events or maybe a new tall tale that's coming. That would be great. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, but forts, two thumbs up. They are are quick to get in and out, and you feel like you've accomplished something at the end. And I, I really appreciate that you can achieve something without having to invest so much time. That is the the one thing that I really dislike about Sea of Thieves. Uh, that it's it's just feels like it's not worth it to play if you can't invest three hours of your day into it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the forts change that. Um. So I'm looking forward to playing again this evening with you guys. And of course, I am still playing Fallout 76. Um, This was the last week for the Alien event. Did a little bit of that. Uh, And of course, the homework for season whatever this is. Um, I mean, I don't remember what number it was. Um, We did a Campfire Tales event. We, of course, being Archon and I. Uh, we did a Campfire Tales event, and I don't know if you remember those, Vendor. Rick, I think you do. Yeah. They're the ones with uh, Scout Leader uh, oh, Penny. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. The... Oh, hey there. Yeah. <laughs> don't Wolfgang. forget the buddy system. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the best the best voice actor character in the game. Yes, she's yeah, my favorite best. NPC in Fallout 76. <laughs> yep. And, of course, you get either one of two stories when you do Campfire Tales. You get the tale about... Layla, uh, who goes out to find out what's been uh, happening to the campers that go missing, and she's attacked by um, her counselor, Nia, who has become a Wendigo, or you get the story of Layla's little brother, Ronnie, who dies to a giant rad scorpion um, out in the wasteland. Uh, very uplifting, heartwarming tales. Uh, but we we were doing this event... <laughs> You saw my facial expression just then, right? Yes. Okay. (laughs) We were doing this event and they've added a third story. They've actually added Mia's story. And you get to hear the whole thing from her point of view. So she goes missing between Ronnie and Layla. And it was really, really cool getting to hear a new story. And uh, Archon Hmm. got really excited and he he was talking. I was like, shh, I'm trying to listen. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> but it was really cool to play this event that we've done so many times and actually get some new lore. So that was fun. Moxie in the chat was just saying, there's two stories? Now there's yeah, three. Yeah, now there's three. Now there's three. So definitely, definitely check out Campfire Tales if you haven't for a while. We also did Project Paradise. And um, yeah, Project Paradise is one of the more difficult events, but we had a lot of involvement from other people on the server. So that was promising start. And Archon decided that he wanted to go for the backpack this time. And uh, to get the backpack, you have to get a code, which unlocks a door. And inside that door is another code. And you take that code somewhere else and put it in a computer. And then if you successfully finish the event, I believe you have to keep all three animals alive. Uh, you get the Arctos Pharma backpack. Hmm. Um, I found this out when uh, Archon told me what he had done uh, very sadly while he was waiting for his crashed game to reboot. <laughs> after the event was over while I was trying on my new Arctos Pharma backpack that he didn't get. <laughs> so naturally I could hear you. Oh my <laughs> God. It's beautiful. Oh, you should see. It's so slimming. <laughs> the first thing I did was go to his house and change my backpack. <laughs> nice. You're a terrible yes, person. I am. And the second thing I did was make my backpack invisible again. Well, I mean, I, I didn't want to rub it in that it's, badly. It's just payback for when he told you to pick up that hollow tape. <laughs> this is karma. You're right. Mm -hmm. yes. I don't remember that. That is what you get, dear. You missed uh, it on the last yeah. episode, Rick. You oh. should listen to that. It was a heck of a story. It was it was a good one. Mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, he took advantage of my trust. And uh, <laughs> it was so good. He, he deceived me and okay, it was funny. It. Um, also, I've been playing Elden Ring and I, I'm really excited to talk about Elden Ring, you guys. Of course, I am. I am. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Bender looks like a disapproving professor. Uh, wait, wait. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> continue, continue. Okay, uh... Elden Ring. Um, so I'm, I'm, of course, much, much behind Rick. Rick is, is advanced, doing exciting things. I'm still in the starting area. I haven't put in nearly as much time. Um, but I, I've been just kind of bumming around in that starting area and trying to sneak around, level up, get myself comfortable with the mechanics. And I, I was, the last time that I played, I saved at the entrance to this cave full of wolves. Mm, yep. So yeah, I was at this wolf yep. cave and uh, I'm like, okay, I'm ready to tackle this wolf cave now. I sneak in there. I look down. It's a room full of wolves. I'm like, yeah, I can take these guys. This is going to be fine. So I <laughs> jump off the side of the thing and start fighting the oh, wolves. I did the same thing. And I bet it ended the same for you as it did for me in the yes. You Died screen. Yes. yes. <laughs> I was like, I got this. <laughs> I didn't got this. I didn't got this as it so happened. So I'm like, okay, caution is the better part of valor sometimes. Let's let's take this a little easier. So I, I went down and kind of, I, I was sneaking along the side and there's a single wolf like eating a dead body over mm -hmm. there. And I'm like, okay, one wolf I know I can handle. So I go up and engage with the one wolf and I'm like, yes, this is great. I, I, I was able to defeat it. And then um, the other ones all saw me and came running and I didn't got this anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so I go in again and uh, I, I, I kind of try to draw that one wolf away a little bit before I fight it. It works. And uh, I go in and I, I kind of try to get the attention of a single wolf and back up and kind of kite it over into the corner so I can fight them one at a time. And this works really splendidly, right? It's going super, super well. But then the last wolf is a very big wolf. The alpha. And he's a very mean wolf. Mm -hmm. And I, I was not ready for him. <laughs> I, I, I was not ready for his Shelly. And, and it was really bad. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> it was really, really bad. That's you guys. like a really good 2000s reference. <laughs> Over and over again, this this wolf just ate my face off. And uh, so finally I decided I'm never going to beat these wolves, but I, I can beat that first wolf and kind of stealth around and see what's at the end of this cave. You know, that's, that's I'm a bandit, right? It's fine. I can get around. That's what I do. I'm a bandit. I'm going to mm-hmm. sneak and use stealth. So um, I, I kill the one wolf and I sneak around. And I find this shimmering golden mist. And uh, it offers me the option to traverse the mist. Of course, I'm going to traverse the mist. Traverse the mist. And I found myself in the lair of a beast man fellow. uh, And he was very, very fast. And he was very, very mean. And after he killed me, I said, I'm terribly sorry to have disturbed you, sir. <laughs> I'll just be on my way. It's so like, I left the wolf cave. I was, I was yes, I was not ready for this place. <laughs> and I remembered Rick asking me if I had been to the beach yet. And I thought, there's a beach? I'm gonna go to the beach. Who doesn't love the beach? I mean, yeah, let's let's go to the beach. So I'm I think I haven't been this way. So the beach is probably this way. So I strike out in that direction. And um you have it's, a it's, map. I'm not going to look at it. (laughs) (laughs) So get this, Vendor, get this. Uh, Earlier this week, we were talking about Elden Ring, Rick and I. And Rick says, you know what? You should really look into builds. You know, you should look at some builds. You'll, You'll be a lot happier with your character if you look at how to build. And I was just thinking, like, Rick, in our history as friends, like, what makes you think that I would do that? that i would ever ever i don't know your penchant for lists and writing everything down that's true okay okay and like it's simple they're like this is where you need to put your points and these are some weapons to look for yeah that's a build that's all because you shouldn't spend like (laughs) don't throw points into arcane because then you won't do any damage at all so that's what i mean just 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 look up how people do bandits well, maybe edges. maybe I will, but like I tend to just be a a, a bit of a chaos obtuse situation. Obtuse, okay. That's I just fair. just that's magoo fair. your way through Elden Ring. I, I mean, do. You're gonna I die anyway. That's anyways. what I do in every. And today he was talking of. I, I I mentioned that I wanted to dual wield, and he's like, "Well, then you can't block." I was like, "Block." <laughs> Wait, there's an eyesight. You can block. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, but anyways, so I'm heading towards the beach. Uh, I, I have a couple of small enemies. I defeat them. I'm feeling good about it. Feeling good about myself. I find this nice lake. And Rick had warned me to be careful about a lake. Apparently, this was not the lake, right? No, this, uh, it's a puddle. <laughs> a puddle. Okay. She's like, she tells me, she's like, so I explored it's the lake puddle. and nothing happened. I'm like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. She's like, yeah, I rode into the middle of it. Nothing showed up. And I'm like, well, first of all, that can't be the lake. Where were you? And like, there's there's only one lake in that area. And she's like, oh, it's like south of the wolf cave. And I'm like, what lake is south of the wolf cave? And she's like, well, it's got like the gas pods in it. And I'm like, that's not a lake. <laughs> she's like, yeah, it is. I'm like, you could stand on one bank. And throw a rock to the other side. Yeah, you can't say you explored something it's you a, just looked at. It's a man. It's I'm a Manitoba. New Mexico. It's That's a, man- a lake. It's a Manitoba lake. Like it just. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> there was a nice turtle there, so I went and told him hi. He was a very cute a little dog. turtle. I want to be there the first time you go to the ocean. <laughs> like I, I mean, just, we, can that I just, we, can, we can make that happen. I just we can make that happen. Yeah. Anyways, uh, I won't like it. I'm sure I won't like the ocean. <laughs> like I'm well, you don't have to really go in confident it. I won't like the ocean. I've been to both know, oceans and know, I've stepped in neither. I, I, yeah. So uh, anyways, <laughs> anyways. So I, I um, go forth and I'm, I'm still making my way towards what I presume is the beach. And I see this statue guy like on this cliff. 
I, I don't know that it's a cliff, but it, I don't know what to call it. It's like the the rock where uh, in the Lion King they hold Simba. Uh, oh, oh, it's it's right, yeah. Uh, yeah, it looks uh, just uh, like uh, that. Yeah, it looks just like that. <laughs> so I climb up there to check out this statue guy, and I was able to interact with him, and he lit a candle in his hands, and and a blue light came out of it, and. I was like, oh, this is great. So I was going to follow the blue light and I it just kind of petered out and nothing really happened. So I don't know if I need to find more of those guys. You need to go in that general direction. Okay, I'll keep it, doing it that. points you to a thing. Uh, if you love the wolf cave, you're going to love this. <laughs> the okay. <wolf> cave. <laughs> okay, we'll give that a try. I'll see. I'll see if I can find it. Um, you were really close to where it was looking at that lake. So, mm, so okay. just follow that blue light special on aisle <laughs> death. And you'll... Okay, I will check out the blue light special. Uh, but I gave up and decided, you know what? I'm getting distracted. I am going to the beach. So I resume my quest for the beach. I like and where this is going. <laughs> there's this giant giant uh he he's a very giant giant troll. It's a troll. He, he was huge he was huge mm -hmm. and i was like okay i know i i'm not ready for that like i, I know i'm not no. so i hid in a bush and waited while he walked by and after he got to the other side of the bush there i went down <laughs> towards the beach i was like yes stealth for the win and I, I did make it down to the beach. And I was like, ah, oh, the beach, it's beautiful. And it was beautiful. The, uh, the ocean, the water's beautiful. Mm -hmm. The sand is the light, the skies. It's, it's all beautiful, uh, except the Lovecraftian horrors that were crawling on the beach. They were not. No. They are what I imagine a Nautilus looks like without its shell. <laughs> um yeah yeah they were horrifying they looked like um the these little blobs of of tentacle it was just ooh. they're called land octopus they were very scary octopus and i knew that i was not ready to attack those guys either um so i decided to avoid them so I, I stayed a little closer to the rocks and I, I was going towards the right down the beach. Mm -hmm. And as I was going, I, I heard this beautiful sparkling noise mm -hmm. that kind of reminded me of uh, the sound in the old Assassin's Creed games. When you would find a memory fragment, <laughs> there was a very particular sparkling noise. And uh, I, I, I just that that noise was beautiful. It made me so happy. But there were these little like shining silver footsteps on the beach. And uh, they, they went in a little track and I thought something is making this happen. There must be something under the ground or, and I spent way longer than I am willing to admit trying to figure out what was happening until yeah. finally my wild swings hit that thing. <laughs> And it was it was like a little scarab thing, mm -hmm. and it, it gave me some kind of a a pile of ash. What what's it called, Rick? Uh, did it give you a lost pile of ash? I think so. Okay, yeah. that's what you use to duplicate ash of war uh, incantations. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Well, it gave me one of those, and uh, mm -hmm. I was actually a little sad because then the beautiful sound was gone. I, I destroyed. <laughs> so there was one beautiful thing in this world, and I killed it. Actually, that reminds me. Uh, I was exploring this, like, cliffside, and there was, like, some bats and stuff, and uh, killed the bats. And as I'm getting closer to this, like, gowned lady, she's like, oh, la, la, la. she's singing, like, Latin How? or something. How? How was that? I, I missed that. Okay. She's like singing Latin, very beautiful Latin. I'm like, oh, this is nice. Like, you know, I know there's a lot of NPCs in this game. I'll, I'll check this out. And I was like, as I got closer, then she went and like attacked me. And it was it's just like, snowflake. Ah! it's not snowflake. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it tricked me with its beauty. <laughs> so great. So great. Oh, um, no. 
so after I killed the the beautiful sparkling footsteps guy, uh, I was making my way down the beach. I get my and... way downtown. <laughs> yeah, face is passing. I'm homebound, and so <laughs> I see this guy sitting at a campfire, right? And I'm like, I bet this guy is a trader. I, I bet he's a merchant. So I'm going over there. I'm like going to talk to this guy. And um, there's a message written there pretty close to him. So I read the message and the message says, beware swordsman. <laughs> and I was like, oh, OK, OK, you're not going to fool me. All right. And just to, to make sure everybody knows exactly what I'm working with at this point, I am a level six bandit. I have the starting gear. Um, bandits start with a little knife about so big, a little curvy knife about so big, and a little shield about the size of a salad plate. And <laughs> that's yep. what you've got. And you've also got a bow and arrows, but I don't know how to use my bow and arrows. I used them during the tutorial cave. Uh, but now every time I try to use my bow, she just like grabs at her quiver like it's empty. I don't know what's going on there. I hate what I call the uh-oh animations. Yes. Because like, so when you're using the staff, the problem with the staff is like you're sitting there, you're like, right? And if you hit the staff without any FP, he's like, huh? What? <laughs> like, it's like he just forgot everything and went complete Forrest Gump for a second. It was like, I don't, what? Is, I've never seen this thing in my life before. Meanwhile, like everything's coming at him and like he's still fiddling mm -hmm. with his staff. I'm like, dude, it doesn't yeah. work. Get over it, right? Cephalon Kiwi says it's probably empty. I have 27 arrows. I have them equipped. I don't know what's going on. Um, but I, it's, I'm fully willing to accept that it's a user error. Um, the UI is terrible, uh, in this game. It's, it's pretty bad. Um, well, but anyways, thank you for confirming that I'll never play it then. So <laughs> I have this little knife and I, I sneak up on this guy at the campfire and I backstab him and I love the backstab animation you right. guys it That's gives cool. me life like i thrive on the backstab animation i stab him in the back um should we and... be worried <laughs> and i pull the knife out and he stands up and turns his head and looks <laughs> at me <laughs> and owie like... <laughs> and he just it's like so this big old like cal drogo looking dude is staring down at sun me. and your stars and I'm like this little bandit, like, uh, sorry. <laughs> and I think, okay, okay. I, uh, the best defense is a good offense. So I go in swinging <laughs> and I just start madly slashing at this guy and I killed him. It worked. Oh, I killed him before he even had a chance to, to attack me. Okay. So it went super well and I collected yeah. the runes and I, I picked up loot from his corpse and I, I stood feeling satisfaction and, and power. <laughs> And uh, so I had made it to the end of the beach and I thought, okay, now I need to go see the other end of the beach. So I'm going. And again, I bypass the Lovecraftian horrors. There's another turtle. <laughs> I'm like, Hey turtle, what's up, bro? And uh, the the, uh, <laughs> what is that? I don't know. I don't so, know. It's just funny now. Some rolling down the beach. Right. And um I see these guys and there's two guys sitting on like a rock with some driftwood and there's a third guy kind of a ways out and they look kind of like caveman kind of dudes and they have clubs and I'm like, these guys are not civilized. I can beat them. I know I can beat these guys. I've got this. And so I'm going to sneak up on them. Right. So I start sneaking and I am very far away from them when they spot me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, demi humans. Okay, that's fine. They're running at me, and I dodge one and do like a little slash with my tiny knife and like do a dodge roll and stab with my tiny knife. And um, it actually goes pretty well. I'm not taking too many hits. And um, 
I, I haven't accidentally panic drank all my flasks. So <laughs> <laughs> that was great. And um, they start Banshee screaming at me. And yeah. I got real scared, but I did defeat these guys. And nice. I felt so good about it. At this point, I am feeling absolutely powerful. And why did my notes say vendor right there? Because you found a vendor. <laughs> Oh, vendor! I found a vendor. Maybe I maybe back. I unconsciously put that there because I still have FOMO. I don't know. <laughs> there was a merchant next on the beach, so I talked to the merchant, and I don't want to buy anything. And he's like, "Well, get what out of here buy? then." <laughs> Shoot. And so I, I bypass him, and there's these horrible slug porcupine creatures, bone, and they I like think they're called like bone masses. How do you learn that? How do you know? what they're called rick stays up all night and studies the book he's got a prima official guide on elden ring (laughs) so these things like they're flat and they they crawl across the sand in a slug-like way Mm -hmm. and they leave like a gross trail behind them and they're covered in spikes and i'm like well they barely move at all right like they're not very fast i can take this guy so I pull out my small knife <laughs> and I stab him and he immediately shoots out a five foot long spike that I don't know where he was keeping and impales me on it. Uh, and I did like no damage to him and he took like half my health bar. And I said, I'm terribly sorry to have troubled you, sir. Um, I'll be on my way now. And I left. <laughs> I get to the end of the beach And I noticed these three very tall skeletons. They were so tall. And I'm like, but they're just, they're just skeletons. How tall were they? They were very (laughs) tall. Um, But I'm like, yeah, these are just bones. Like I can get them. They're fine. They're just skellies. Uh, They're going to fall apart. It's going to be fine. So I, I attack the skellies, and these skellies are the toughest enemy that I have engaged. <laughs> you thought you far. could just see your th- see see a thieves your way through that. And... I did, I did, and these guys are so tough. And uh, I'm fighting them very methodically, right? Like I, I'm trying to, I, I'm doing strategic dodge rolls and stabbing them with my tiny sword and um it's it's going okay i have them both down to about a third of their health health bar but they have me down to about a fifth of my health bar and i'm out of flasks so at this point i decide that it is time to abort mission and there's this uh whirlpool thingy that that like a tornado um and i i saw rick when i watched rick play i saw him um use his horse to jump in that thing and it made him fly and i thought i'm gonna use that and i'm gonna get out of here and i'm gonna be like sayonara bitches and i thought it was a great plan and i run out there and this tornado thing it turns out is right on the edge of the deep water and (laughs) turns out you can't swim in elden ring (laughs) you run past it i did run past it (laughs) and it fell in the deep water and that was the most runes i have had at once in this game so far and Uh. and i was upset and i i respawned in the wolf cave (sighs) And I was not having this, you guys. I was not having it. I was going to get those runes back come hell or high water. So I summoned my spectral horse and I I rode down there. And it was this very epic ride of me dodging stuff on my horse. And it was fantastic. I got back to the runes. I reclaimed them and I pieced out of there. (laughs) (laughs) and uh and i got back to a safe area with the the site of grace or whatever they're called and um used those runes to level up before i could lose them again nice and i realized that i had picked up a big sword from one of those banshee caveman guys oh cool uh like a what was it called it was called a 
I don't remember what it was called. A falcon, maybe? Oh, uh, yeah. I, yep. Yep. Those it's, are good. It's a very big sword. And so I equipped that. I thought it had to be better than my little bitty knife. And uh, I had some dorky armor I had picked up off a soldier. So I put that on because it looks much better stats wise than what I had. Yep. And uh, this lady, uh, she wouldn't let me rest at the sight of grace. She wanted to talk to me. Mm -hmm. So I went over there and she's like, yo, I'm a witch. And I'm like, okay. Um, she asks me if I'm the one with the spectral horse. And I was very nervous because I thought if I tell her, yes, is she going to like want to fight me for my spectral horse or something? But, um, you know, I, I try not to lie. So I told her, yes, I'm the one with the spectral horse. Mm -hmm. And she gave me the ability to summon a pack of spectral wolves. So now I have this spectral wolf summon, a very big sword and a dorky set of armor. And I think I think I am ready to go back to that wolf cave. I don't think I'm ready for the boss, but I think I can beat the big wolf now. So I'm going to give it a try. You should be able to do the boss Very with the excited. wolves because the wolves will aggro the boss, and then you could just run up and swing a couple times, dodge as he aggroes to you, and then the wolves yeah. will aggro him again. Then you run back. And I don't know. He was that. he was very fast. That that beast man guy. He was super super fast. Beast man. Beast man. Guy. Yeah. It was he was very scary. But yeah. I'm excited to play more Elden Ring. It was really fun. It's a very good game. Nice. That's it. All right. <laughs> squeaky boom arm I to, there. I have to. It's, it's been sitting so long through the Elden Ring gameplay that it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm just. Kidding. I was excited to tell my story. I love the Shaleen stories. They're always the best. Don't forget to tune in next Friday for more Shaleen stories. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that is a show, folks. Uh, don't forget, we're sponsored by Oak and Crow Coffee. If you head on over to oakandcrow.com, you can pick up a bag of We Just Love Coffee blend and $2 from every bag goes to the Children's Miracle Network. And like we were talking about at the beginning of the show, we want to hear from you. What is your perspective or your opinion or your thoughts and comments on some of the things that we've talked about on tonight's show? You can email us at info at wejustlovegames.com can also find Shaleen and myself on Twitter, Shaleen at Shaleen L, myself at Vendertron N, or the network's account at We Just Love Games. We are also on Facebook, facebook.com slash We Just Love Games, facebook.com slash groups slash We Just Love Games. And if you're listening live right now, you can scroll right down below Rick there on the left hand side. There is a link to get into the Discord community, which is what we like to call the chat after dark. Don't forget, we record the show live every Friday, 6.30 p.m. Mountain Standard, 8.30 Eastern Standard Time, right here on twitch.tv slash we just love games. We are on YouTube, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, uh, and any other podcast platform that you can think of. Please like, subscribe, and review the show, and we will shout you out. And thank you all for listening. Do either of you have a last word? That's a dog. <laughs>